All right, let's go over the quiz here. And Cirque, always getting everything right. So on your test, I'll probably have you uh, convert something to degrees. 5 pi by 12, I'll probably keep it a little simpler than that, but let's do 5 pi by 12. 5 pi by 12. And the conversion factor is, since I want degrees, I want degrees on the top, the pi on the bottom. The pi's cancel. And I know that 6 goes into 180 and 12 pretty easily. I know that 180 divided by 6 is 30. I know that 12 divided by 6 is 2. And then I would say, hey, 2 goes into 30 and 2, 1, and 15. In fact, this whole thing works out to 5 times 15, which I'm pretty sure is uh, 75 degrees. Number one, convert. Or sorry, number two, convert 220 to radians. So it's going to be 220 times pi over 180. It says leave your answer as an exact value in terms of pi. I would expect that it's fair game to ask you to clue in that the zeros will cancel. Divide by 10, divide by 10. I would even expect Mitsu that it's fair game to say divide by 2, divide by 2, so that you would say this is an 11 and this is a 9, and hopefully you would get 11 pi by 9. One mark. Find two coterminal angles for 11 pi by 4. Okay. I'm going to add 2 pi. Wait a minute. That's dumb, Mr. Duke. Spencer, what's my denominator here? You know what? I'm going to add 8 pi by 4. And I'm also going to subtract 8 pi by 4. Uh, it looks like 19 pi by 4. It looks like uh, 11 take away 8. 3 pi by 4. Did anybody add another time? Uh, if you add 8 pi, uh, 27 pi by 4 would work. Were there any other answers out there? Nobody decided to phase shift out to the million just to annoy me? We'll call that... You know, Will Lee a couple of years ago did that. It was funny once, but now just annoying. Uh, state the principal angle. Well, the principal angle, I'll call that P of theta. I just made that up right now. Uh, I guess 3 pi by 4, that's the angle between 0 and 2 pi. That's the, I sort of called it, Eric, the lowest terms angle. Number 4, curveball. Eh, a little. They told me in number 4 that x equals 2, that y equals negative 4. I should be able to find out what r is. Well, r is going to be the square root of x squared plus y squared. It's going to be the square root of 16 plus 4. I think r ends up being root 20. Or 2 root 5. Mr. Duick, would you make us do that? If I gave you this... It would be a multiple choice, nasty question, and I would probably have that in the answer. So I'd expect that you clue in that when you get a root 20, you can pull out your math pen and rewrite square roots in mixed form. Um, now what? Well, they want me to go sine theta minus secant theta. Sine is y over r, negative 4 all over... <coughs> 2 root 5 minus secant, secant, secant goes with cosine. Cosine is x over r, secant is r over x. 2 root 5 over 2. By the way, if I'm marking this, if you found R properly, that gets you a half mark, but we'll keep going from there. And if you wrote this, that would get you a half mark. How do I multiply fractions? Multiplying fractions, Justin, that's the easy one. Top times top, bottom times bottom. How do I divide fractions? Almost as easy. Flip the second one and multiply. Adding and subtracting fractions, that's the pain. Common denominator. Although, I think what I would do... I would choose to reduce these fractions first. I would choose to say, you know what? I got a 4 on top. I got a 2 right here. 
This is really negative 2 over root 5. Minus. I got a 2 on top and a 2 on the bottom. The 2's would cancel uh, root 5 over 1. Now if you didn't do that, don't freak out. You can also reduce later. I need a common denominator. Sabina, what's underneath this fraction? What's underneath here? You know what my common denominator is? It's going to be root 5. I'm going to rewrite this whole thing as one big fraction over root 5. What would I multiply a root 5 by to change it into a root 5? It's a trick question. So the negative 2 just drops down like a domino. And the minus sign drops down. What would I multiply a 1 by to change it into a root 5? Why, I'd multiply by root 5 and by root 5. Multiplying also by a 1, but by a funny looking 1. And on the top, I would have root 5, root 5, or root 5 squared. Or just plain old, holy smokes, 5. In fact, I think this whole thing works out to negative 7 over root 5. Now, if you got that, that gets you 3 out of 3. If you didn't see the reducey thing, I think you'd have this, negative 14 all over 2 root 5. I guess I'd take that, but let's reduce numbers by numbers, roots by roots. Any other weird answers out there you're wondering about? Yes. <coughs> oh, you rationalized it. Oh, clever you. So you said negative 7 root 5 all over 5? I'll take that too, and I'll even smile in your direction and say, oh! By the way, I would also then go uh, half mark for that, half mark for that, half mark for that, and then one mark for the answer. Something like that. Any other weird answers out there? Should do it because maybe a bunch of those. No, I, I consider this a curveball, so there's going to be on your multiple choice probably two or three, but not 15. Uh, and then we're back into familiar territory. Amplitude. Four, one mark. Period. Two pi over three pi, which I'm pretty sure is just plain old two over three. One mark. Phase shift. Emily, is there an alarm bell? Nope. So phase shift is just five or five right. better. Uh, vertical displacement, seven. One mark each. Number six. Describe the details of and graph this. Emily, is there an alarm bell? Yeah. Yeah. I need to rewrite this as y equals negative 3 cos. I need to factor out the 1 half minus 1. Well, there's going to be a theta. There's going to be a plus. Hmm. What's going to be left in the brackets when I factor out a 1 half? Well, Mr. Duick said that factoring is equivalent to dividing. Really, what's going to be there is pi over 4 divided by 1 half. How do I divide by a fraction, Dominique? So you're telling me it's really going to be pi over 4 times 2 over 1, which would give you 2 pi over 4, or lo and behold, just pi over 2? Yes, it is. Your amplitude is... 3. Your period is 2 pi over a half. Hey, it's 4 pi. Your phase shift is negative pi by 2 or pi by 2 left. Your vertical displacement is negative 1. Ah, but we're not done. Mr. Duick always said it was worth finding two more things. It was worth taking the period and dividing it by 4 which gives me a lovely pi. My dots are going to be pi apart. And then it was worth finding a good scale so that instead of saying my dots are pi apart, I could say my dots are how many squares apart. 
Uh, that's over one. That's over two. That's over one. You know what? I think my horizontal scale is going to be pi by two. And I'll call this two pi by two. And I'll call this eight pi by two. The period is going to be eight squares. And every dot is going to be every two squares. Let's bring in my, uh, oh, what did I say I did first? Vertical displacement I did first. Uh, negative 1. Amplitude 3. 1, 2, 3. Amplitude 3, 1, 2, 3, uh, negative 4. Each square is going to be pi by 2, so I'll call this 2 pi by 2, 4 pi by 2, 6 pi by 2, 8 pi by 2. I'm really going up by pi's, but I don't want to reduce. Why make myself do extra thinking? Uh, negative 2 pi by 2, negative 4 pi by 2, good enough. Phase shift. Okay, my first point is going to be one square left, somewhere on that line. Brett, what am I graphing? Positive sign, negative sign, positive cos, or negative cos? Uh, negative cos starts where? Yoink. And then every two squares one two middle one two top one two middle one two bottom one two middle i've run out of room hey let's go backwards middle top middle bottom jeez do it Yes, the tongue helps. Now, if you used a different scale, Mitsu, what you're really looking for is this. Do you have a point that goes through negative pi by 2, negative 4? And does your next point go through 3 pi by 2, positive 2? Because you could have gone with a scale of, for some reason, Pi by fours would also work. It would just mean that every four squares would be a dot, and your period would be 16 squares long, and the phase shift would be uh, two squares left. But the coordinates would match mine, Justin. Uh, how do I mark this? So uh, one mark, one mark, one mark, one mark for each of those. Two marks for the graph. What I would probably do is give you a half mark if you had the amplitude and vertical displacement right. So half mark for the amplitudes, half marks for the vertical displacement, and then one mark for getting the points right. So a half mark off for each point that's wrong. So if you have two points wrong, sorry, the best you can do is one or two. Is that okay? Number seven. Oh, they double A. So normally we said the range was vertical displacement and then A down and A up from there. If they double it, it's going to be vertical displacement, and then 2A down, and 2A up from there. Uh, that bad boy. What's the domain of Y equals tan 2 theta? I'm going to ignore it for the 2 for a second. I know that normally tangent doesn't exist at plus or minus 90. Plus or minus pi by 2. Oh, normally x can't be pi over 2 and pi apart. Normally. But, Brett, how has this been changed? We've replaced theta with what? We've replaced theta with 2 theta. That's a horizontal compression by a half. You know what? In our case, now it's going to be pi over 4 plus multiples of pi over 2, where n is an integer.
half marked, half marked. If you forgot that, take off the half mark. What's the domain and range of y equals 4 cosecant? Hmm. Hmm. Well, normally, normally the range was everything bigger than or touching 1, everything smaller than or touching negative 1. But, Spencer, what's right there? Vertical or horizontal? Really? You think that's right next to the theta tucked inside the function? I think it's vertical. Vertical what? I think that's a vertical expansion by 4. I think that. We'll check on our graphing calculator in a second, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, a, d a domain. Uh, Cosecant goes with what? Cosecant goes with what? Sine? So, where sine theta equals zero, that's where x won't exist for cosecant. Where does sine theta equal zero? Here, here, here. Oh, x can't be zero plus multiples of pi, where n is an integer. Now, Sandily, normally we would erase the 0 plus for secant. There is an actual number there, and so we leave the number there. I think secant starts out at pi by 2 plus multiples of pi. I can't even remember. I just derive it every time. One mark, one mark. Let me double check. Does this work? I'm a little worried about that for cosecant. Let's see. Calculator up, clear. How would I graph cosecant? Oh, 4 divided by sine x. And I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go zoom trig. What? Window. Oh, if I'm going from negative 4 to positive 4, I probably need to go a little more than that. How about negative 8 to positive 8? Hey, that looks good. Sure, I'm in. Looks good. So one mark, one mark. Give yourself a score, please, out of 21. But I don't want to collect these because I won't be seeing you between now and the quiz test time, will I? No. So you know what? I'm just plain not going to count this one. <gasps> if you did good, good. If you didn't, then I guess less good, but, well, you'll figure it out. Okay. Okay, listen up for a second here. Um, I noticed that something strange happened when I printed trig review number one for you. This is what we gave you when I was away last week. For some reason, only every other page printed. And as I was going through it, I went, well, a lot of the weird curveball -y practice questions, stuff with cosecant, secant, those seemed to be the ones that were on the pages that didn't print. So what I just gave you is actually trig review number one, the second half, the part that didn't show up. And I'd like to recommend a few more questions. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I like these questions. I like these questions. I like these questions. Okay. So, from the section that I just gave you, Six. Oh heck. Six through nine. 
and you'll notice seven and eight are asymptote and domain questions about ugly cousin and reciprocals. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Why don't you just say fifteen through? Okay, fine. You know what, Mr. Duke? Fifteen through seventeen, comma. 22 through 24, 31, 32, 34, 41, 42, 41, 42, 43, 41 through 44. 51, 52, 54, 59, 60, Seventy-nine, eighty, eighty-five. These are lots of them. I, I, I noticed that the section you had seemed to be missing a lot of the questions that I thought were great practice. Ninety-four, ninety-six, Hundred and five, one oh eight, one twelve, One twenty one, one twenty two, one thirty one, one thirty two, one thirty three. And the written section, that you can temporarily ignore. Most of that is on trig part two. What's going to be your written section? I already told you, but I'll say it again. Two graphs, and then probably four trig equations, one of which will be a reciprocal, one of which will be a quadratic, one of which will be a weird and plus or minus, like alarm bell equals negative one, zero, or one. It's going to be one of the axes. You have to use a unit circle. And one of which will have a domain change. Huh? I was going to do a lesson, but I think what I'm going to do is just simply say, hey, work on this. I gave you two reviews. I would say target this one right now. So what do we have grand total? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. Well, lots of questions, like 60 or so. Started continuing to count. Um, again, Trevor, use your judgment. If you get, like, for example, a whole bunch of these are 
uh, cast rule questions. If you can glance at it and do it in your head, check if you're right, skip that. Or you know, a lot of them are exact value questions. If you're doing exact values in your sleep, you only do the tough ones. Oh, secant, that's trickier than sine, say, or something like that. Okay? Yeah, yeah? Is this due before the test? Well, sure, I guess I'll say, how about of the two reviews that I gave you, I would love this one here handed in the day of the test. I'll give it back to you, though, because half the questions apply to the next part of the trig unit, too. So I'll get it back to you as soon as I can. Any questions at all? So I normally don't press pause like this, but I thought about it over the weekend and I was, boy, it's missing a lot of good questions. In fact, I think there's more questions here than what I originally assigned. I'm shutting up.